My criticism of various beliefs is not to say that there are no positive aspects, things that you can find comfort in, useful attributes to certain meditations, philosophies and ideas that may well inspire you to live a full and happy life. My point is, you cannot be sure that what you believe is correct, even if certain attributes of it are highly beneficial to those who practice in the right way. It does not make your beliefs more factually correct. Many people find an incredible benefit from faith healing, and if they wish to do that, it is their own choice. Yet finding positive effects as a believer is not enough for us to say we should bring faith healing into hospitals as standard medical practice. The potentiality of psychological benefits for some people is not enough to make it good for everyone. Although some people, perhaps even many, would find the benefit from a great many therapies and treatments, it would not work with every single person. And even if it did, even if we could psychologically manipulate everyone, it would not make it a scientific fact that the Holy Spirit works through certain gifted individuals who pass on that energy, that power of God, to people who believe in him. And that's why, typically, so-called healing from faith healers happens in spiritual centres and churches, not in hospitals. Although there are some cases where people have a person come in to provide complementary medicine, which can include such things as faith healing, Reiki healing and spiritualist healing. Roughly speaking, they are all pretty much the same, simply with different traditions and ideas behind them. Alternative therapies and spiritual traditions have a psychological benefit upon the believer. Despite certain groups and certain organisations having particularly negative traits, some of the therapies used are beneficial if a person has belief. In some cases, even if they don't, but are simply credulous enough to go along with the experience. Various issues that we hold on to psychologically can be helped by relaxation techniques, including meditation, which can be used to establish a sense of focus, but also a sense of calm. In actual fact, with many alternative therapies and techniques, you need not believe in a magical realm in order to bring about a sense of personal peace. Those practices and ideas that do no harm, I have no problem with. It is all good and well to find a bit of happiness in this life, if you can, and yet your experiences are not enough to call it scientific or to claim the superiority of your techniques over another. For there to be genuine science when it comes down to such ideas, only genuine scientific conditions can confirm the validity of a practice or technique. Controlled conditions to limit or eradicate error are priority. In a belief system, although there are many people practicing, controls are practically non-existent. So-called tests with no real controls, full of believers who are looking for results, performed by amateurs, is not sufficient to say a technique is indeed correct. The big problem with poor conditions is that people can influence the test with their own biases. The people in the study as subjects 
as well as the people running the actual test itself. I don't have a problem with the practices that you believe in, that you use, and you find benefit from. However, I do have a problem when people call it a science, but they cannot show genuine evidence. That's when I have a concern, as well as when people claim that their techniques, their ideas, are superior to other techniques and ideas. If you find a benefit from your belief, then fine, providing it does not pick my pocket or break my leg, I need not concern myself with it. But when you overstep the mark between belief and fact, and try and state because you believe, or because you have experienced something, that it is indeed true, then of course some criticism is to be expected from those who do not subscribe to your world view. Understand that my critique of people's beliefs is simply to point out that there seems to be a discrepancy between what is claimed and what is observed that the mystical and magical claims often made are not necessarily evident. Although the major concern that draws me towards criticising certain beliefs is not so much the pseudoscience as much as the dominance of the leadership. Certain dominant roles the abuses of power, the effect upon the follower, especially in terms of the inner group, that is the primary reason for criticism of certain gurus, spiritual teachers and ministers.